In Chapter 1, you create a series of dots that cover the entire composition. You will do that, uh, most likely, by using the Ellipse tool from your Tools panel and by copying and pasting a whole bunch of dots over and over and over again. Um, this is a really great way to get to learn how to use the tools and how to work effectively by copying and pasting and duplicating and holding that Shift key while you do that. There is an alternative and I'm going to show that now. Um, it's probably actually not the best way to go about um, working on the exercises for this chapter, but it is a good kind of tool just to know, and it's always good to see different ways to achieve uh, similar results. So what I'm going to do instead of creating these shapes is I'm going to create a single line, just picking up my line tool, and I'm holding the shift key while I drag my straight line. Um, right now I have a line that has no fill and no stroke, so I'll just load black into my fill. And I'm going to fill the line with a pattern brush. So I'm going to have to go into my brushes and define a pattern. Um, let me see, I'm going to go under window and open up my brushes panel so we can see that. And what I'll do here is with my direct selection tool I'll take just one of those circles because ultimately all of my circles are in groups now. This is my final file so I'll go take one of my circles and I'll just drag and drop that right on the brushes panel. This is going to open up a new brush dialog box. I'm gonna say a new pattern brush and I'll have some options for that pattern brush. Now typically I would say just press OK and see what you get, um, but since I've done this already I know that I want to add a little bit of spacing. You can always go back and change this later, but since I since I sort of know what I want already I'll go ahead and just cheat and add my 10% spacing. And I'll press OK. Now I have a brush that essentially lays down circles for me so if I click on my line, I can then click my pattern brush and that will add my circles to my line. And I can count out nine, there are ten, indeed ten circles. I'm going to make sure that there are. Um, if I change my line, then that changes all of the circles. So if I again take my direct selection tool and maybe stretch my line out a little bit, I'm going to change how the circles fill my composition. Um, then I can proceed as you did basically for your exercise. I can hold down the option key to duplicate and the shift key to make my duplication run straight down the page. And I can make a whole bunch of copies. Um, I can then use my um, align and distribute panel or my align panel to distribute my objects once I have them set. Um, and so forth, but I cannot move these one circle at a time. So basically, I still have a line, um, what Illustrator considers to be a line. Um, and notice if I set no um, stroke and no fill, then my circles are gone. And if I set just a fill, my circles are gone. And if I set just a stroke, then I see my circles. So um, keep that in mind. You are still kind of dealing with your stroke and fill colors when you're using a pattern brush. Now the one thing that's going to be really different is these are not, you know, you're looking at them and thinking that they're circles, but they're actually lines. So there's a little bit of confusion that could happen here if you if you use this method. Um, but Illustrator sees these as lines with the pattern brush applied to it, and it doesn't really care whether it's a circular shape or some other shape. So if you wanted to select one of these circles, um, you sort of can't. I mean, you're basically you're stuck with a line that had circles on to, imposed on top of it. So for the last part of the exercise, when it's time to um, delete some circles, if you would use this method, instead of deleting circles, you would just create white circular shapes on top of the black circles that you want to delete or eliminate. So I will set no stroke and I'll click on my fill and I'll load white into my fill just to to show this as an example I'll choose any circle at random I'm gonna put my cursor right in the middle I'll hold option which will allow me to select from the middle out 
and shift, which will keep a circle, my uh, proportions constrained, so I have a perfect circle. And I let go of the mouse before I let go of my keys. So now I have, that's a circular shape, just a white circular shape that an illustrator understands as such. So I could take this shape and hold the Option key and click and drag to move it anywhere else, seemingly deleting my circles. I'm really not deleting circles, I'm just hiding them with a white shape and I have to be a little careful about making sure it's, it's covering my edges. I might hold the Shift key and make this just a little tiny bit bigger just to make sure I'm hiding all edges of the circles. So this is just a different way to approach the same problem there are always lots of different ways to approach the same design challenge in the Adobe um, software, and um, that's something that I hope that you'll explore in these screencasts.